Good Friday, let us pray. Loving God, you sent Jesus to be our Messiah, to save us from an eternity of suffering away from your presence. Yet, we have betrayed him, we have denied him, we have abandoned him, mocked him, and crucified him. We pray that you would open the eyes of those who are blind to the mercy that you have shown us through your Son, who suffered and died for us sinners, so that we may have eternal life in through, and with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Yet, O Lord, not thus alone, make me see your passion, but its cause to me make known, and its turn. Passion of our Lord, according to John, the 19th chapter. So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with two, two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and placed it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather that this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, They took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, 
and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and a disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, Tatalistai, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. This is the passion of our Lord. my conscience grieve me. Let your cross my fear disarm. Peace of conscience give me. Help me see forgiveness won by your holy passion. We have kept our eyes on Jesus over these 40 days. We now approach the cross where we hear the seven words of Jesus as he proclaimed them. The first word from Luke chapter 23, verse 34. And Jesus said, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them. Forgiveness is not a teaching of the Bible, it is the teaching of the Bible. Given the importance of forgiveness, it is not surprising that the first words from Jesus on the cross are about forgiveness. That is the whole point of the cross. Jesus is dying for our forgiveness, so that we might be reconciled to God for all of eternity. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. There is comfort 
to be found in these words. Jesus forgives the sins of which we are not even aware. We know not what we do. If we could take a look at the books of justice concerning our lives, we would be shocked to discover that the sins of which we are not aware far outnumber the sins that we recognize. Jesus' forgiveness of sins is complete. It is the forgiveness of the sins of our ignorance. What a comfort it is to hear these words of Jesus. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The second word from the cross we find in Luke chapter 23, verse 43. And he said to them, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. In the two thieves that hung beside Jesus, we find that there are really only two reactions to Jesus either rejection, or repentance. The first thief mocks salvation, even as it hangs right next to him. He represents all who rebuke and reject Jesus, while the other thief recognizes his sin and the cost that is to be paid for it, and he responds appropriately to the offering of everlasting life. This poor, miserable sinner is the first to see and fully embrace Jesus for all that he is the only means of our salvation. This salvation is available to all who repent and rely on the atoning work of Jesus with the full assurance that you will now also be with Jesus in His kingdom immediately after taking your last breath. third word from the cross we read from John chapter 19 verse 26 woman behold your son son behold your mother woman behold your son then he said to the disciple behold your mother these words are far more than just seeing to it 
that his earthly mother is taking care of in his absence. This word is a word that is both of and to the unique community that has embraced him. This word is for the church, the community of believers. Mary will, from this moment on, step back as his mother, and she will uniquely reflect the image of the church that cares for its children. And the disciple represents those whom Jesus has bound to himself in the office of holy ministry, to be faithful witnesses who represent him and his continuing work on earth. This is a word to the church. Church, behold your earthly shepherd. Shepherd, behold your flock. fourth word we find in Matthew chapter 27 verse 26. Eli Eli Lema Sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus is he who was without sin, who became sin. When God had turned his back on or forsaken Jesus as he hung on the cross, it was your sin that was up on that cross, and God turns his back to all sin. So the Father at that instant turned away from Jesus, who was forsaken, so that he would not have to turn away for, from or forsake you. fifth word from Jesus, John chapter 19, verse 28, I thirst. I thirst. This is not a thirst for a drink of water. This is Jesus thirsting for your righteousness. This thirst has driven him to depart his throne in heaven to take upon himself all of your sin-filled unrighteousness. Jesus is the only sin offering that can satisfy the wrath of of a righteous and holy God. Jesus' thirst is for the sinful to be made righteous. His thirst is for you.
sixth word. John chapter 19, verse 30. Tatalistai, it is finished. It is finished. This word is not a sigh of relief as his suffering was coming to an end. This is a word of victory. He is claiming his triumph over sin, death itself, and the devil. This is the obedient son reporting to the father, reporting that God's will has been done on earth as it is in heaven. This is the new foundation laid once and for all for the life of the world. The salvific work of Jesus' mission to redeem all who would trust in Him alone is the victorious proclamation, It is finished. The seventh word from the cross we find in Luke chapter 23, verse 46. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. This is the final word from the cross. This is more than Jesus saying, mission accomplished or my work here is done. No, this is the moment that Jesus trusts that all that is needed for salvation of the world has been completed. And it is in this spirit that Jesus now entrusts His return to His Father who art in heaven. This is the moment born of a life of individual lament, offered with serene tones, yet presented with bold expressions. Bold expressions of complete and confident trust in God alone. This sin offering is the one who redeems, rescues, and delivers the repentant believer. This is the eternal living word that is proclaimed in the lives and in the voices of all the faithful who can and will repeat these words when our earthly journey is complete, when we say, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Amen.
there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb?